I've been making videos on Minecraft mods, resource packs, etc. for almost a full year here on YouTube, and it wasn't until recently that I realized I've never put out a full-blown video guide on how to properly mod Minecraft and teach people how to add all this new content to the game. So in today's video, with Christmas now behind us and plenty of new Minecraft Java players, I want to show you guys an incredibly easy way to mod Minecraft going into 2025, as we'll be going over mod launchers, making your own mod pack, customizing existing mod packs, moving vanilla worlds to modded clients, and so much more. Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on my new videos dropping later this year, and let's jump into this. So to begin your modding adventure, you of course have to own Minecraft Java Edition, which is going to be found on Minecraft.net by clicking on Games, clicking on that Minecraft button, then scrolling all the way down to Windows, Mac, and Linux, and clicking Buy Now. You can get the best bang for your buck by buying the $29.99 version, because the other version just comes with a bunch of Bedrock content, and we are trying to mod Java. So once you've bought Minecraft, downloaded the launcher, and signed into your Microsoft account, we're then going to be going to curseforge.com and getting what's called a mod launcher. So we're going to click on get the curseforge app and then download standalone. And this is essentially the curseforge launcher, which is a pretty good beginner friendly launcher that I recommend to just about anybody. I went ahead and downloaded it to my desktop, so I'm just going to go ahead and double click on it so that we can go ahead and get it installed to our computer. We're going to click next, click this button right here, click next, and it's going to go ahead and install it. And essentially what a mod launcher does is it just makes modding Minecraft so much easier as it auto downloads dependency mods, allows you to mass update mods a lot quicker, and just in general this is just one of the easiest ways possible to get into modding Minecraft as quickly as possible. So now that we have the launcher completely open, I'm going to go ahead and go into full screen. It's going to give us this little intro and we're going to go ahead and skip the intro. And now it's going to ask you to log in. You don't have to log into CurseForge if you don't want to. You can continue as a guest, but I'm going to go ahead and log in since I have an account. And there we go. We have now logged into CurseForge and this is the first screen that you're going to see. We're of course modding Minecraft, so we're going to go ahead and click to mod Minecraft do the standard recommended Minecraft modding folder, and there we go. We essentially have the world at our fingertips already, and we just started the video. So let's go in and talk about making your own mod pack. It's as easy as clicking create, go ahead and give it a profile name like mod pack, select the Minecraft version that you want. Of course, this is going to depend on what mods you want to play, as for example, the Aether mod is only updated to 1.21.1, or the Deeper and Darker mod. Basically, not not every mod is going to be updated to the most recent version super quickly, so do keep that in mind, but for the sake of the video, we'll do the Pale Garden update. You're of course going to choose your mod loader. We don't really want vanilla because that's not what the video is about. So you have Neo Forge, Quilt, Fabric, and Forge. I personally recommend Neo Forge and Fabric the most. I personally stick to Fabric, however, because it makes Minecraft run the smoothest, at least for me. So if you do have a weaker computer, Fabric might be really good, and we're going to use the most recent mod loader. So it's going to go ahead and create ourselves a mod pack and auto install fabric API and already we can go ahead and start adding content by clicking on add more content we can go ahead and add mouse tweaks we can scroll down and add clumps we can go to the waystones mod and add that as well maybe get a optimization mod here we can go ahead and install shaders if we'd like and the cool thing here is I just installed iris shaders and what that did is it auto installed sodium for me because sodium is going to make our game run faster and and Iris needs sodium to run, so it goes ahead and cuts out the middleman of needing to do extra work. We can also go to resource packs and we can go ahead and install fresh animations because why not? And this is of course going to auto install ETF and EMF, which is going to allow the resource pack to run. We can go back to add more content and even throw in a shader pack just for the heck of it. And so to go ahead and test and make sure this works, we can go ahead and click on play. And what this is going to do is it's going to go ahead and update and boot up the Minecraft launcher for us. And after the updating, it's going to ask us to sign into our account. And this is of course to make sure that we actually own Minecraft like I talked about in the beginning of the video and what we're going to notice as soon as it's done is if we click on Minecraft Java Edition CurseForge went ahead and made us a profile called whatever you named your mod pack to which you can go ahead and click play click I understand the risks and then now it's going to go ahead and download some extra content and we are already done. 
And so with Minecraft now loaded up, let's go ahead and make sure that all of our mods work just fine as I'm gonna go ahead and create a creative world here so that we can load in, make sure there's no crashes, make sure there's no problems. And so far, everything looks good. I'm gonna go ahead and press O. And as we can see, the shader pack screen popped up and we can go ahead and apply the complimentary reimagined shader that we just got. So there we go, iris and sodium are working perfectly. I can also go to page two of the creative menu and we can see that the waystones mod is working as intended. And as one final little test, let's go ahead and go to search, type in villager, and then let's type in vindicator and give fresh animations a good old test. We'll go ahead and equip the resource pack. Do keep in mind that you will need to put the resource packs on if you're creating your own mod pack with them. Spawn in a villager, spawn in a vindicator, and to me, it looks like Fresh Animations is working just fine. Now, for some people, creating your own mod pack from scratch can seem like a little bit of a daunting task because you don't know exactly what to add. So if you go to the browse menu and go ahead and type Demon Joe TV, you guys can actually get my very own mod pack called Vanilla Perfected Curse Forge Edition. And essentially, I created Vanilla Perfected to be used as a template for people trying to get into modding, hence it has vanilla in the name, as it's not exactly going to add a crazy amount of stuff to the game right off the rip. So I want you guys to customize this as much as possible as it only has 79 mods 11 resource packs and one shader but how exactly do you customize someone else's mod pack well by clicking on these three dots right here and then going down to profile options you can then click allow content management for this profile and boom you can now add content you can now take away content if you'd like to and everything in between so i'll go ahead and go to add more content we'll type in deeper and darker so that we can get a brand new skulk dimension and while we're at it i'll go ahead and add a mini map mod as well and just like that you've taken somebody else's mod pack and added your own content to it and in my opinion vanilla perfected is a perfect slate to start from if you guys are looking for a brand new mod pack so now you've loaded up a brand new mod pack, but let's say for example that you've been playing on another single player world in vanilla Minecraft and you wanna bring it over to this new mod pack. How exactly would you do that? Well, go ahead and go to your file explorer here and we're gonna go and look at the .minecraft folder by clicking up here and typing percent app data percent and then clicking enter this is going to take you to the dot minecraft folder which is basically just the vanilla root folder for the game then we're going to go down to the saves folder and we're going to go ahead and take the world that you want right click it and click copy then you can go back to the curse forge launcher click on these three dots and click open folder and this is where your mod pack folder is you can double click on saves and then paste in your world right then and there once everything is fully copied over you can then open the game back up go to single player and you can actually find it right here now let's say for example you were trying to install a data pack because data packs are on a world by world basis they're not exactly the same as mods where it just applies to everything in your game so i'm gonna go ahead and take my favorite data pack of all time called all mob heads so we're gonna search that up and we're gonna find it right here this essentially adds a completely new collection system with just tons of mob heads in the game and i think it's really cool we're gonna click on files and then we're gonna go find the version of minecraft that we're playing which is 1.21 we're gonna go ahead and click download then we can go ahead and open up Minecraft and find the world that we want to install the data pack to, click on edit, go to the open world folder, and then we're going to go to our downloads folder and we are going to cut the new data pack that we just downloaded. And then we're going to go to the data packs folder and then click paste. Then if we want to make sure that it worked, we can go ahead and boot up the world. And here we are in our world by pressing escape, we can go to advancements and here is the heads collection tab. So installing the data pack worked just fine. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is how to manually install mods, because while CurseForge has a massive catalog of Minecraft mods, there are a ton of Minecraft websites that are out there that host mods to be able to be downloaded. So let's go ahead and take this horse buff mod, for example. How exactly would we get it installed with our CurseForge launcher since we wouldn't be able to find it under the add more content tab? Well, all you're going to do is you're going to click on these three dots right here, go right back to opening the folder like we did earlier when we added a brand new save, and then we're just going to go ahead and open up the mods folder. Here, we're just going to go ahead and drag and drop that mod, and it's going to work just fine. 
And with that said, that's basically it. That's essentially all you guys need to know about modding Minecraft in 2025. We of course only covered the Curse Forge launcher in today's video, and there are plenty of other options out there if you would like, but I feel like Curse Forge is perfect for beginners. So let me know what you all thought down in the comments down below. If you guys do have any questions, definitely feel free to sound off as I or someone that's helpful in the comments will make sure to get back to you. But I do feel like this video did cover just about every basis it could have. So yeah, let me know if the video helped you guys out. Definitely subscribe to stay tuned for all my other new mod reviews and resource pack reviews. And thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.